welcome back to the workshop here for Ed Howard Piano Industries. We're going to be sharing you a video today about uh, some different ways to make income as a piano technician. Obviously, um, uh, the majority of your income is going to come from servicing and tuning pianos, um, with tuning being the, the thing that you do most often. Um, but uh, there are a number of way, other ways that you can make income as a piano technician as well uh, that can uh, supplement, um, add to your income, um, uh, but you have to be creative. So I'm going to go through a list of different things today that, uh, that you know, some, maybe some things you hadn't thought of before and that you might want to add to services that you offer to, um, to add to uh, the income that you make if um, you know just the tuning and the servicing uh, you know isn't uh, isn't making enough uh, business for you so we're going to go through a list of different things and um, obviously not uh, most people aren't going to want to implement all of the ideas but uh, you may find uh, you know several or a few of the of the ideas that you might uh, say hey I can do that and add that to the list of things that you do as a piano technician um, the one thing you want to do is, as you, as you service pianos, there's obviously other work. Uh, most of the time you're going to go to tune a piano, but um, you might come across a piano that needs additional work, such as uh, regulating, uh, you might, uh, you know, other things that we're going to go through, um, uh, repairs and so forth. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is, uh, obviously, on, most, on a lot of pianos that we tune, uh, as a technicians, uh, we'll come across things that uh, pianos need that uh, could be done to improve the piano, but um, you know may not be cost uh, you know cost effective, or or some uh, the customer may not see the benefit of um, of having the work done. Okay, so you want to be careful that as you present. Um, uh, your thoughts and uh, recommendations on other work that's needed that you don't just come across as a salesman, somebody that's just trying to, you know, sell the work and, and uh, just in it for making more money that, uh, you know, you really come across as someone who says, you know, hey, this is really going to benefit your piano, but you also want to assess the situation and determine, okay, well, is this um, repair regulation that uh, could be done but isn't necessarily um, absolutely necessary that um, that it's not something that uh, you know the customer is I mean you, you know you can make your suggestions but be open to um, to the possibility that the customer may not see the value at it and so there are some things you can do to to um, help educate the customer and seeing the value, but um, also being aware of, um, you know, it might not make a noticeable dis difference for the person playing the piano. Um, so uh, oftentimes as, as pianists or technicians, we're going to notice things that uh, the customers won't. So just keep that in mind. Uh, regulation work is probably one of the, the most important things. And obviously you can do a full regulation, which, uh, you know, takes... Uh, longer than if you were just to make uh, some of the more minor regulation adjustments such as let off and um, lost motion and uh, checking distance and that kind of thing. Sometimes you can offer partial regulation. It's much easier to sell something that might take you a couple hours to do rather than a full regulation which might, uh, you know, depending on what type of piano and what kind of work it needs might take you, you know, a full day or uh, on some grand pianos might take you two days. Uh, much easier to sell a two-hour job than than a two-day job. So um, you know, and also you know, find those things that are going to make the biggest difference to the customer. And, and you want them to be able to pay you for a two-hour job and say, "Hey, wow, this really makes a big difference. I can feel a big difference," um, as opposed to spending two days on it and getting a minimal amount of um, uh, of difference there. So so there again, you want to weigh weigh um, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, making a big difference for the customer in a short period of time um, can be done. But obviously, this uh, depends on the condition of the piano and, and what the um, you know what 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 the piano actually needs. So, um, another thing that that can easily be added on an add-on service is um, piano cleaning. Okay, um, and we're talking about the inside of the piano. You know, most piano owners, uh, when you're working on their piano, they don't want to have to take all the keys out of the piano and take you know the the um, the bottom board off. Uh, you know to vacuum down around the pedals and if you got a grand piano um, you want to 
they don't necessarily want to clean under the strings and obviously you, uh, most customers you don't want them taking the action out of their grand piano so they can vacuum in uh, the action cavity and so forth so you know being able to offer um, cleaning services uh, you know cleaning the in interior of the piano is is a real simple way and it's something that obviously most people can readily see you know if you've got the piano apart and you can see oh look at all this dust inside the piano um, you know, would you like me to clean it? And obviously, you know, you want to have, you got to have time in your schedule for that, but uh, you can either do it or say, you know, maybe we can schedule it for next time that I come to tune that um, I can cleaning, do a cleaning on the piano. And there you can add, you know, depending on what how long it takes so you can add a you know an extra 30 40 50 dollars on to your to your service and so it's an extra add-on service that's a fairly easy one to sell to most people um, obviously repairs and voicing are part of the servicing that you can add on um, you know for me when I if it's a simple repair and I go and it only takes me 5 10 maybe 15 minutes at the most um, in a lot of cases I won't charge extra for that some technicians do um, but if it's a simple repair especially if it's only like a five minute repair or ten minute repair um, sticking key you know just uh, add in some CLP or repinning one one flange or something like that it uh, only takes a few minutes and I don't generally charge extra for that but you know if it's something that takes 20 30 minutes um, you know I'll add that time onto the bill um, for for the time that I spent to do that and most people are, are you know don't have a problem with that so um, but you know if it's more extensive repairs um, you know say you've got a bunch of clicking clicking notes in a spinet piano where the uh, rubber lifter grommets are all dried out um, you know most people can hear that and some of them may have noticed before that you came to tune it that hey there's this clicking noise in, in the keys um, you know so that's an easy one to to to, for people to be able to see and you can say you know I can do this and then and then regulate the lost motion once I replace the um, the rubber grommets that's just an example so there's there's a there's a lot of different things obviously if there's elbows that are broken or or many other things um, you know so so you can you could always come a, come up come a, up with a list of things that um, need to be done but again you want to weigh you know what what's really going to make a big difference for the customer um, you know obviously if a piano is really old and it, it needs a lot of work you can make suggestion of uh, doing some uh, reconditioning or even some some uh, rebuilding on the piano um, you know that's more extensive work obviously so so you want to um, make sure you plan ahead and plan well for something like that and, and uh, come up with a detailed quote for the customer um, depending on the piano they may or may not want to spend the money on it uh, it may not be a piano that's worth uh, putting the money into but uh, in some cases it is or even a partial rebuild of uh, you know key bushings or um, key tops uh, that kind of thing um, you know doing those those things uh, can make a big difference for a customer and and uh, be worth worth the money put into it um, uh, you can also offer to do appraisals obviously there's some um, knowledge that you need to to get in order to do an appraisal but uh, some people are sell either selling their piano or they're buying a piano and they want to know what uh, what the piano is worth um, so because a lot of times you know like on Craigslist or something like that if somebody's selling a piano both the seller and the buyer don't know what the piano should be worth so um, oftentimes um, you know they'll need the services of somebody to offer um, a valuation appraisal um, to, to find out what the piano should be worth what it should be be able to sell for sometimes for insurance purposes uh, they need to know uh, what the value of the piano is so um, but uh, but there again you wanna you wanna um, learn you know through research what uh, what what piano values would be and there's um, a lot to go into that which we don't have time for in this video but um, learning to do appraisals is another thing you can charge um, charge your for your time for <coughs> excuse me um, another really good thing um, and obviously doesn't apply to all piano owners but 
and it depends it depends on what part of the country or the world you're in is um, you can offer to um, do damp chaser uh, system installs and damp chaser is the humidity control system that that is sold for uh, for pianos um, they've got a website damp chaser I think it's dampchaser.com or something like that but um, uh, you can find out if you learn how to install damp chaser systems um, they have to be installed by a piano technician so if you're a piano technician you, you certainly qualify to to learn how to install those they've got training on their website um, so go to their website if you're if you're interested in finding out more about those but those oftentimes you can you can convince a customer that it would be it would be beneficial uh, to, for their piano um, because uh, oftentimes it means the piano will stay in tune better between tunings it might mean that they can go longer between tunings um, uh, it'll it helps protect the the piano itself because you don't have as big of fluctuations in uh, humidity levels inside the piano which is going to prolong the life of the parts to some degree um, you know prevent damage such as soundboard cracks and or at least help prevent um, those those uh, some of those uh, damages um, pin um, damages to the um, the bridge and so forth so so uh, Damp chaser installs are, you know, especially on on more expensive pianos, are are a good uh, item to 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 make suggestion uh, recommendations for. So, and um, you know, the amount you can make from installing a damp chaser system is is a fairly good amount, and as well as the markup on the system you can make. So, um, you can make. Uh, uh, pre-purchase inspections okay for somebody like again if somebody's buying a piano off of Craigslist and um, you know uh, again sometimes the seller doesn't know what, what the condition of if there's major issues or anything but you can uh, you know you can somebody um, and you can advertise yourself your services on Craigslist say are you looking to buy a piano and need to have somebody look at it uh, you know a technician um, you know, give me a call and, and uh, we can schedule that. You know, it doesn't usually take very long to, you know, check the soundboard and the bridges and the condition of the action parts and so forth. Um, you know, just, just make sure that it's a uh, uh, piano that's going to be in decent condition for the buy person buying it. Um, and, uh, you know, you can always, and what I do is if, you know, I sometimes get calls from people that are going to buy a piano off Craigslist and, and, um, Sometimes I'll even give them free information over the phone. You know, obviously, there's not much I can tell them over the phone except for general generalities, um, general items that uh, that they can look for when they're when they're looking at a piano. But um, you know, it is best for somebody to have a piano inspected by a professional or somebody who knows what they're looking for um, when uh, buying a piano from a private seller. Um, now the other thing that I've done a couple times at least uh, is uh, you can help somebody sell their piano for a commission. Um, I had a customer um, uh, not too long ago that uh, that had contacted me and they had a Steinway Grand piano that they wanted to sell. Um, they didn't really know how to go about it, um, you know. So for a certain percentage fee, I said, "Well, I'll advertise it and, and uh, you know get the word out and." Um, so I advertised it through Craigslist. Uh, you know, talked with different people that I knew, and, and tried, and I found was able to find a buyer for them. So, um, you know, you you can determine what the percentage is, but uh, you know, and it'll obviously depend on the price range of the piano. But um, you know, you can um, you can make some money off that. So help helping somebody sell their piano and finding a buyer for them. Um, now, one thing about uh, some of the additional work, obviously tuning, oftentimes people want during certain times of the year, before Christmas, right before, school, you know, right when school starts, um, you know, maybe around Easter time, you get a lot of churches that uh, call for tuning. So the tuning, um, you, you get uh, you get a lot of it cert during certain times of the year, but some of these other um, maintenance items you can do on during the, what's called off-season um, you know, in the summertime tends to be a little bit slower if you're going to be doing some rebuilding or reconditioning. Um, you know, it's best, you know, to, to balance your workload out is to, to schedule that during your slower times of the year. Um, 
you know, so maybe some of the repair things that are going to take a couple hours or regulation work or something like that. You can schedule four times when you're when you're less busy between the between the busy times, and so that's a good way to balance out your out your work. Now, one thing, um, uh, another thing you can do um, is, uh, you know, and there's a number of different factors that uh, that I'll talk about. Is um, is what's called piano flipping. Okay, and we'll uh, I'll actually have another video on uh, that talks in more detail about piano flipping. But buying a used piano, maybe doing some minor work to it, uh, tuning it up, cleaning it up, and uh, turning around and selling it for a profit. You know, there's always deals on Craigslist on decent instruments. Um, uh, obviously, you're gonna have to. It's it's best if you have something to move the piano with, you know, and a way to move the pianos. Um, uh, you know, you want to make sure you check with, you know, your local um, uh, regulate regulatory authorities that um, you know if they've got certain guidelines on what you can do to sell. But if you're only selling a piano here and there, um, in most areas, in most cases, it's it's not a big deal. You don't have to have like a license or anything. Um, in 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 a lot of instances, yeah. Again, you'd want to double check on that to make sure in the area that you're in that uh, they allow that. Uh, but watch for our other video. We're going to talk more in more detail because I've had some experience with this um, in piano flipping. Um, so, but it's it's a good way to to make some extra money. And, and again, it's one of those things you can do and and work on uh, in a slower season. So, um, you know, we're doing some work on pianos. Um, uh, another thing you could consider doing is uh, offering having ex piano accessories available for customers. Okay, you've got some sometimes come across a piano or a customer who needs um, caster cups for their piano. Okay, so having those available or at least a way that you can get them for the customer um, is uh, is a good way to do it. You can you can carry um, some of the most common um, piano care products such as the, as the Quarry Care. Products, you know, the high gloss polish and key bright, you know, that cleans the keys and so forth like that. Because you know, often have customers that, you know, they want to know what can they do to keep their piano looking nice. And so some of those piano care products are nice to to be able to say. And you will say, well, I've got uh, some high gloss polish here that uh, that you can you can purchase from me and and add that uh, to your bill. And you could obviously want to mark it up from what you get it for. Uh, to make a little bit of profit for the uh, trouble of carrying those products with you. You can have uh, assortment of desk knobs. Um, sometimes you'll come across a piano that is missing some desk knobs and people are pleased to have, uh, you know, to be able to have those back. You know, it's one of those little things that uh, makes a big difference for people. <clears throat> or music desk hinges. I don't know how many times I've come across a piano that the uh, the hinges at the end of the music desk are... are um, you know, either missing or the screw came out, you know, so if you've got replacement screws or replacement hinges, um, you know, you can um, sell those and install them and charge for your time and and, uh, and, and for the hinges and so forth. Um, you have, make sure you have a, um, a resource for, um, you know, things like um, piano benches, um, uh, dollies, uh, you know, the kind that they put underneath the piano, um, like the spider dolly under grand pianos, you know, obviously you don't stock those things, but uh, if you've got a catalog Jansen in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is um, not too far from us, um, they, they've they got uh, many of those items available. Um, you know, piano bench cushions that you can order. We actually sell piano bench cushions, so if, uh, you know, if somebody needs a piano bench cushion, you can either get it from us or, you know, direct people to, to our website. Um, uh, so having resources available that you can purchase those those items and even carrying a catalog like the Jansen catalog carrying that with you so that uh, you can show um, uh, you know show that show the products to the customer in, in case they're interested because uh, I don't know how many times that I've come across you know somebody needs a bench or they need a, a cover for their piano or they need a, a, a dolly um, you know, so if you've got that catalog available, you can uh, make a profit um, off of that because uh, the prices in the Jansen catalog, you'll see um, those are the retail prices, and obviously they offer a, uh, for a, a discount for um, technicians and, and uh, retailers, um, so you'd want to contact them about uh, what that is. Um, 
you know, then there's other skills that you could build on, uh, such as key top replacement, um, polyester repair. Um, you know, there's not a lot of places and people that, uh, not a lot of technicians that uh, do polyester repair. You could learn how to do ivory key top repair. Uh, there's a kit that, um, that you can get that, um, uh, you can, you can do the, the repair on your ivory key tops. Um, one thing that I've done in the past, I don't do anymore, but, um, uh, one thing you can do is, uh, offer piano moving services. And obviously there again, there's a, quite a few things involved in, um, but if you're going to do piano flipping, you might as well offer piano moving services because, uh, you've already got hopefully the equipment to do it. So you're going to need obviously a trailer or a vehicle that you can, um, move the pianos in. Um, you will want to have insurance. Um, that's important to have. Um, you, you know, you don't want to have to use it, but it's nice to have the. It's it's important to have the insurance if uh, if you're going to be moving pianos. Um, but uh, check in your area. You know, around here there really wasn't um, a lot of options for people for piano moving. So when we offered it, uh, we we did pretty well with it. Um, um, so in, none of these uh, specific things are going to make you rich as a piano technician, but uh, they certainly add to your can add to your income. So those are some things that um, you know that you can consider um, adding to your services. Um, so um, you know, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Our website is howardpianoindustries.com.